This is why Luke wrote an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may have certainty concerning the things that have been taught. So, I know your next question. Who's Theophilus? Good question. It's an even better answer. Often when biblical passages have more than one potential interpretation, more than one potential meaning, especially in prophecy, I tend to subscribe to the idea that since it is the Holy Spirit who is guiding the writing, a lot of times both interpretations are probably simultaneously correct. This happens to be one of those examples. So, most scholars tend to think, because of the greeting, most excellent, he's probably writing to a Roman, probably like a provincial governor, someone of authority, like a government official. That's what they believe. But possibly, he's not writing to that one man. Maybe there's a deeper meaning. Here we go. And a big theme today will be the fact that ancient names had meanings. We give names because they sound cool. We just like how they sound. Back then, names were words. They had meanings. Theophilus is one of them. And if you break it down in the words we use today, it's pretty easy to figure out what Theophilus' name means. First part of his name is Theo, such as theology. Theo means God. The next part of his name is Phil. We get that philio, which means a lover of or a friend of. So Theophilus' name means a lover or a friend of God. So if you're a friend of God, if you love the Lord, then you are Theophilus. And this entire gospel was written to and dedicated to you so that you may have certainty among, concerning the things that you've been taught. So it's a letter for you.